Hi all, today we're going to make a pair of fussy dice, or crochet dice. They have been around since the 1950s, and they are pretty common to see in the rearview mirrors at car meets and car festivals, etc. But I can't remember ever seeing a pair of crochet dice, so hopefully this will be a first. The idea came to me when I was thinking about squares. Making a crochet square is not as easy as it seems. This piece is 13 stitches wide and 13 rows high, if you count the chain row. And as you can see, it's nowhere close to being square. It can be stretched to look more square-ish, and you can get away with making this look square if you attach it to other sides that helps keeping it stretched out. So making six of these pieces and making a dice of them is not optimal. I have a feeling it will look warped when it's done. There is the option of the granny square, or solid granny square. In short, they are square. But with those, you get the issue where to put the dots. I suppose you could stitch them on with a needle and thread later, but I get a feeling that this wouldn't look very good. Like on the face that has five dots, you would have to attach something in the center, and the granny square has a hole in the center. So yeah, I'm not sure, I'm just not sure it would look good. And it was this conundrum that caused me to start to experiment with different designs, to get closer to a side that is square. And not just square, it should also have the potential to hold all the dots for the different faces on the different sides. The idea being that the same design would apply to all faces 1 through 6, without any changes in stitch count or amount of rows. And it took a few tries, but eventually I found a pattern that I was at least semi-happy with. So I took some notes and then I dove into my yarn stash and found this nice green color. And some white for the dots. And a few hours later, I had this dice. And I know, it's not perfect, it's mostly down to the foam that's inside it. I kind of overfilled it so it bulges a bit on a few sides. But I figure it's still good enough to make a second one and complete this project. Alright, so let's make a dice. Since all the sides are pretty much the same, like I mentioned, I think the best way to show you this is for me to show you the face that has 6 dots, since that has the most dots. And as we get to the center, I will explain how to make the center dot as well, for the 5 and the 3 and the 1. And then you will know how to make all different configurations, and we won't have to go through all 6, since that will make this video very long. So we're going to start off with a slip knot, and then we chain 13. So that's our chain row, and we chain one more, and we go through the second chain from the hook, and make a single crochet. And now we single crochet our way back down the chains. For a total of 13 single crochet. So that was row 2, 13 single crochet, row 3, we chain 1, we turn, and once more we single crochet our way down, for a row total of 13. So that's our three first rows. Row four is going to be different from these. This is going to be our first row where our dots is going to be. 
So we're gonna start making double crochets. So I chain two. You can chain three if you want to, but I chain two. I know people do it differently. And then I go into the first stitch. Oh, sorry. I yarn over, then I go into the first stitch and make a double crochet. Then I make a second double crochet. But we're gonna change color before we make this last before we complete uh, the double crochet. So I'm going to place my green yarn here. I'm going to take my white yarn, place it next to it, and pull through with white yarn instead, and then tighten it a bit. Now we're going to make a puff stitch or popcorn stitch. Other people referring to it with different names. So we're gonna make a puff stitch in this third stitch here on the row. So I yarn over, go through, pick up, and go through. Yarn over again, go through, pick up, and go through. And keep going like that until you've done it five times. So you have five loops here plus the start one, but so six in total, six loops on the hook. And the last one. There we go, we have one, two, three, four, five, and the sixth starter one. Now we're gonna switch to green again. So I switched places of the threads, pull everything a bit more tight. There we go. And yarn over with green and go through all of them, like so. And then we make a double crochet in the very next stitch, stitch four. And that's our first dot on the sixth face of the dice. So now we double crochet six more times for a total of seven here in the middle between the dots. That's the seventh. On the seventh stitch, I stop before pulling through the last time. And we're gonna switch to white yarn again. So we cut this. Place the yarn here. Place the white next to it. And we repeat the process of making the puff stitch. So remember, five loops plus the start loop on the hook before we pull through with green yarn. That's five. So one, two, three, four, five plus start. We pull this tight, pull this tight, and the last one. And we take the green. And we go through them all. And we make a double crochet in the very next stitch. And then one last double crochet in the last stitch of the row. So that was row four. And we see we have two dots now. And now we're gonna make so we started with the single crochet, then one row of double crochet with puff stitches. So now we're going to make three more rows of single crochet, 13 across, with, with the green yarn, to get to the next section where the next two dots will be. So chain one, turn, 
and then single crochet your way back here. That's our first row of single crochet. So that was row five. And before we make row six, we're gonna tighten these up and hide the tails. Start by tightening these. This will make them more centered and more distinct. Same thing with this one. See, now we have two more round shapes. That's nice. We can pull the other one to close this little hole there. Prevent the white from poking through like that. Now we can tie each pair of threads together. Now the knot here will keep them secure from not coming undone, but the tails, we're just gonna work them in as we go along on this row, uh, row six. But that will only keep the tails in place. And we'll save time later, since we don't have to hide them manually with, a, with our needle. So row six, same thing, chain one turn and single crochet your way down for a total of 13. But when you get to like the center of the stitch here. I'm going to take these two and keep them, you know, work them into the stitches, but keep them on the back side here. Um, we don't want them poking through to the front. So I'm just going to hold them here. Not like in the center up here. I'm going to hold them, as you can see, on the back side. And I'm going to go through like three or four stitches with them like this, like that, and then we can just put them to the side. And then we check, as you can see, we don't see any white. So we know it was a success. And as we reach the next ones, if we won't have many stitches to hide here, we're kind of going to stretch them up. So we're going to hide them in this stitch already. Let's put them together. Pick up the loop, and we're gonna yarn over, we're gonna pull them down, and then keep going for a few. And then before the last stitch, I let them go. Just like that, you see no, no white poking through still. That's good. So that was row six, row seven. This will be our last single crochet row before our next double crochet row with the dots. So once again, I chain one, I turn, and I single crochet my way down for a row total of 13. So that was row seven. Seven. Now for row eight, this will be our second dot row. So we chain two and turn. We make one single, uh, one double crochet in the first stitch. We start to make the second double crochet. But before pulling through the yarn the last time, we're going to change color to white again. Pick 
up white, go through both loops, tighten. Now we make another of these puff stitch stitches, same way, uh, fail that one. One, two, three, four, and five. Tighten everything a bit. Pull up the green one here, yarn over, and pull through. And we'll make a double crochet in the very next stitch. Now on this row, since we're making a six, we're not going to make anything in the middle here. But if this would have been a fives face, then we would make three double crochet like this. So we would have gone like one, two, three, four, five, six, and on the sixth we would have changed color to white and make the puff stitch here, the seventh middle stitch of the row. But since this is a six, we're not gonna use this stitch to make a puff stitch, we're just gonna keep going with a double crochet. But that's where you would put the center for the one, three, and five face, just so you know. But don't worry, I will put like pattern images on the screen in just a few seconds. You'll be able to see all the faces there. Oh, I forgot to stop. And when you have made on the seventh stitch here, you're going to change color to white. You need to release the other. Print. And then we make our fourth puff stitch. It's two, three, four, and five. And then two double crochet to finish the row. So that was our second row with the puff stitches finished and our our eighth row in total. For our ninth row, we chain one, we turn. I'm gonna single crochet our way back again. This is basically a repeat of the segment from below, as you might see. So now it's just going to be three rows with single crochet. And next row we're going to work in the tails from row eight. So that was row nine. Yes, row nine. And now we're going to make a quick stop here to tighten these up. 
like that. And we're gonna tie the pairs. We're just gonna cut this, of course. And we tighten each pair up. Do the same thing here. Tighten the bottom thread to pull it together. Tighten this one to pull the top of it together to make it more puffy. And we tie the pair together. Just like that. So on our 10th row here, we're gonna do the same thing, chain one turn, and single crochet our way down. Row total is still unchanged, 13. And we're gonna single crochet our way to the center of the last puff stitch here. Like here, take the tails again, put them up here. We're gonna pick up yarn, replace them here, and we go through. So now we keep going, keeping the tails on the back side here. Pull a few stitches. And then we let them go. Keep going all the way down. About here, we do the same thing to these tails. Now that's the wrong way around. Now they are secure and they are secure. Very nice. And our stitch our stitches are puffy and round. That was row 10. Now for row 11, we chain one and turn and we single crochet our way down. This is going to be our last single crochet row before our next double crochet row with the puff stitches. Now for a 12th row, we chain two, we turn, and we double crochet in our first stitch. And the second, and on this second one, we don't go through, we're gonna change color again. To white. It is tighter. And then we make a puff stitch in this third stitch. Then we double crochet in the very next stitch. And then we make six more double crochet here. For a total of seven in between the dots. And on the seventh, once more, we change color to white.
and then we run over and pull through all of them. Then we make a double crochet in the very next stitch. And then one last more double crochet for the row. Now we only have two single crochet rows left up here. So I'm gonna tighten this now, since we're gonna work this in on the very next row. Looks all right. We move to this one, pull it tight. Yeah, that works. Pull that one tighter. We cut that one. Then we Look at it a bit, yeah, it looks fine. We can tighten this a bit more. And then we tie the pairs together. So our next to last row, we chain one, we turn. And we single crochet our way back. And reach the puff stitch. I'm sorry, the, the stitch after the puff stitch. We start to work in the tails, keeping them on the back side. And after a few, we let them go. And here, same thing, we keep them on the back side. That was our next to last row, only one row left, and that's going to be the same thing. Chain one turn, make 13 single crochet, and then we're done. And that's our six sided square, or sorry, six dotted square. Since we worked all the tails in already, we can just go through with the scissor now and cut them almost flush against the surface. And that's, that's that. And the assembly process is actually really simple. First, we pull through and leave some amount of tail, both in the start and the finish, or at least in the finish. Then we thread the needle over with the tail. And then you put the two faces you want to merge together. And then you just pair up the stitches and start going through them like this. Like I said, keep finding the pairs.
Now we can see here, it's a perfectly acceptable sharp corner. We do the same thing with the pieces in the order. I'm going to show you on the screen now. And then you can work them into a box. When I reach this stage in the process, with only one face left to close, I put the needle down for a second and focus on the foam that we're going to use to fill this. I'm going to be using this regular hobby foam that I bought in my hobby store. But I'm sure you can fill this with uh, some kind of synthetic cotton or whatever you have. But it will be more square if you actually fill it with something that you can cut square, like this. So I prepared a smaller square here. This is a piece that was left over from the first cube. And as you can see I cut this down a bit, since it was bigger, but when we stuff, when I stuff this cube with those pieces, it kind of bulges, so um, that's why I cut this down. But I didn't do a good job since it's not really straight. So we're gonna recut some shapes, but in roughly this size. So I cut this piece out and put in a mark roughly where this is going to be. There and roughly here. And I've noticed that it helps with the foam if you squeeze where you cut, that will give you a much straighter cut. You kind of compress the foam as you go. Oh, looks alright, I would say. So let's see how it looks inside. Take the dice out. And compress this a bit. Push it down to the bottom. Make sure the corners are in the corners. Like so. Push work this down. I would say that looks all right, actually. When the foam has been cut and fitted inside, it's time to close it up. So thread your needle with one of the tails. Make sure that it lines up. And then we're just going to start working just like we did before when attaching all the other sides to each other. And start to work it closed. And I kind of keep pressure on this to keep the foam away from the edge because I don't want to catch the foam with my needle. There we go, no foam. And I know it can be a bit tricky to go from a horizontal into a vertical here, but just try to line the dots up and just try to be even with the stitching and it will look fine. To fasten this I just go back under a few here. And pull it in and then go down again and put cut somewhere else. We can cut this, pull it a bit, cut it, and pull it in. Take on the next side.
And we're just going to keep going like this until we reach the edge. And when we reach the edge, we're going to keep going along the seam here. You can stop when you get to about here, because that's when we're going to attach the string that holds them together. When you reach this far, and before we close it up, we're going to fasten this string uh, to attach the dies together from it. The way I did it on this one is I just basically made a lump down here, put it inside, and then just stitched all the way up to it. So you can either tie a knot, like I'm going to do now, or a few knots rather, or you could maybe double crochet a bit back here a few times, I don't know, but the point is we need to make kind of a lump down here on this, a knot or something. And this string, by the way, is just, I don't know, 40 or so chains. Yeah, something like that. You push it in here. Like that. And then we just close it up to the last bit. And to hide, we just go back down a few, and then the same thing. And then a bit more just if we can pull it in. And there we have it, folks. Nice already. Now let's test these out. And they seem to work just fine. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like if you liked the video, and please subscribe for more videos. Thank you. Bye.